everyone. It's Jennifer Stay from Coloring Pages Bliss and if you can't tell already we are going to talk about sharpening colored pencils today and it's going to be a fun quick little tutorial and I'm going to tell you what I know about sharpening our colored pencils and hopefully get you excited about this. Um, Strangely enough, sharpening colored pencils is one of my favorite things to do. I actually have a really hard time throwing away the pretty little shavings. Um, I think they're very beautiful. Um, there's even art if you go online and search for art made from shaved um, pencils. They make really pretty things out of them and so maybe someday I'll do that. I don't know. I think it's really pretty and it's actually part of my blissful experience of coloring is sharpening these beautiful tools. I'm going to teach you what I know about taking care of these little tools. First of all, um, there is a lot of opinions about how to sharpen our pencil crayons and so I'm going to tell you what I do and then you can go from there and discover what you like to do for your own tools. We hear a lot about the Prismacolor Premieres having issues with sharpening and the leads breaking. Mainly that's because the the core of these beautiful pencils um, easily break. If you drop the pencils the core can break and then as you're sharpening them you'll come across those broken areas. And so the very first step to avoid breaking the leads is to not drop your pencils. And I avoid that the very first way is to keep them in a nice case and then I don't let anyone except myself handle these tools unless I trust them. And I usually give them a really good lecture about my expensive beautiful tools and then they treat them with as much care as I do. And so that's the very first step to avoid lead breaking is to don't drop your tools. So I do, like I've said before, I have a set of colored pencils that I share with um, my nieces and nephews when they come over so I don't have to worry so much about them being dropped and they do get dropped quite often. And every time they do, I'm so relieved that I didn't hand over my really nice pencils. Okay, so we're all pretty familiar with sharpeners. Um, these are the kinds that come in the school sets, really inexpensive plastic. And then we've got our um, electric kind. This is by Exacto. Um, these kind here, if you open them up, this is like what we saw when we were in school with the handheld cranks. Let's see if I can, there we go. If you look inside these, they have sort of a grinding mechanism that grinds away the wood and sharpens up your um, lead for you. That's how most of these work. And some of them, when you buy them, they have adjustments so you can adjust how much of the wood is taken away and how sh uh, sharp your point gets. So that's usually when you see the different prices on these, that's usually what's going on. And some of these even come battery operated so you're not stuck with a cord like this one. I don't like to use electric sharpeners because I like to have control over my sharpening and so I am a big fan of the handheld type. Plus the way I color is usually sitting down in my recliner with my feet up and so I like to have my sharpener right there by me where I'm at and so that's why I'm a fan of the handheld. And right now my favorite brand is the Kum. K-U-M and I'll put a link to them. Um, they come out of Germany and their blades are really great. It's all about the blade. Actually these really cheap little ones that the kids have, they're not too bad. You can get a good sharp out of them for maybe a couple pencils but then their blades will go dull really fast and then they're not good anymore. But these um, Kum type sharpeners. They have, well they're saying they're magnesium, they come in from Germany and their blades stay sharp a lot longer and so that's why these ones you hear a lot about. Um, this one here is made by Stadler. I've been playing around with this one for a little while so I'm not sure how long the blade's going to last on this one but I do appreciate that it has a tub that catches the shavings although it is a little stubborn there to get open. So that's been nice. I keep this one in my kit that I take in my purse so that if I'm out 
my I don't have shavings going everywhere in a doctor's office. So that's the one I'm carrying around and experimenting with right now. And I have a couple more brands here. I've got the Coom Automatic Long Point, and I have the Alvin Brass bullet pencil sharpener here and I'm going to um, do a demo on these on a video that I'll upload right after this video so that you can see how these two work if you're interested in these types of sharpeners. So right now we're going to talk about my favorite one here and how I am sharpening my pencils. What you're looking for when you sharpen your pencil is a nice long shaving like this. And what that tells you is that your sharpener blade is really nice and sharp and you're, you're getting a good clean cut off of the wood. If you start getting really um, choppy cuts, that means a couple things. One, either your blade is not very sharp or um, maybe the wood is a little funky in that part. You know, you are working with a natural product and so the wood isn't consistent all the time. So um, that could be the issue. So let's take a good old-fashioned Crayola here and I'll show you how this one sharpens up. Um, when you're sharpening up a pencil crayon or a colored pencil, um, the way you do it is you turn the sharpener, not the pencil. Uh, that's especially important on the more um, delicate pencils like your Prismacolor. If you're working with like say this Crayola one, it's not as important to hold the pencil still. But what that's going to do is hold that lead nice and steady as the, excuse me, as the um, blade runs around the pencil and it's having a little bit of trouble here. Let's get it going. Um, what I'm feeling is it's having a hard time biting into the wood. So either my blade is having an issue or it's the wood, like I said. And it's always this one spot on this pencil. But we did get a, a nice sharp, if you can see that, we got a nice sharp point there. Um, let's try a Crazy Art in my stapler here and see if it feels better. Maybe it's my blade and I can tell you how we change the blade. Or is it just these pencils? This one's sharpening better so maybe it's my blade. I have had this coom here for a long time so maybe I will pause the video and change out that blade. Uh, the combs, you can buy replacement blades if you want, but I what I do is I buy these double ones. You get two holes if you buy a color pencil that are the larger shape, it'll fit in here. But the reason I buy the double is because you get two blades. And then when your standard hole blade gets dull, you just um, exchange it out for the other blade and you're good to go again. So it's like getting two pencil sharpeners in one. And this is going a lot better, so I'm guessing that blade needs a little changing out because I have had this one for several months, so I'll show you how this one turns out here in a second. There, that one. Much sharper. That's a crazy art. And let me show you what the shaving looked like on that one. We got a nice long curl on that one. Beautiful. Okay, so what we're gonna do is find myself a little tiny screwdriver and just switch out these two blades. And then we'll see if we get a better result. Okay, that looks good. And that was really easy to switch that out. The hardest part was finding the screwdriver. Other than that, we're good to go again. So let's see if we have a better experience. This time I'm gonna practice on, this is a Prismacolor Scholar. Let's see how we do on that one. Oh my goodness, look at that. Huge improvement. That's what I get for working with a dull blade.
So sometimes I'll, on purpose, I'll line up a whole bunch of pencils that need sharpening and I'll just sit down and turn on a really good movie and sort of have a sharpening party. It's kind of fun. Like I said, I really enjoy this. It's, I think it's beautiful. Look at that. Now we're talking. Okay, let's try the same sharpener on. Here we have a Faber-Castell Polychromo. It's pretty interesting. I think it's fun to do it because you get to see the differences in the wood. The different way that the actual pencil falls away. You can see how it, the um, pencil is different, the core of it. Ooh, look how the fun long curl I got on that one. Another really beautiful long point on that one. Okay, now before I go into the premiere, and the next thing you want to do to take care of your uh, sharpeners is to use a graphite pencil and sharpen a graphite pencil every couple colored pencils. It cleans off the wax and the buildup of the colored pencil and sort of helps keep it sharp. My Prismacolor Premier Pencil. Okay, there we go. Look at that beautiful sharp point. Who says you can't get a sharp point on a Prismacolor Premier? Look at that. Okay, now another little tip I'm going to share with you before we end here is if you've got a pencil that is, you know, still pretty sharp, like this one here, uh, but you just need a bit of a sharper point for a detailed area, you can have some sandpaper nearby and you can just kind of drag your pencil along that to bring a point to that pencil and then you can do that detailed area without having to sharpen the entire pencil and lose all that um, product there at the end and that will save your pencils and help your pencils last a little bit longer so that's a good little tip for you to um, to use to save your pencils so I hope this was helpful I hope it will help keep your pencils from um, breaking as often and I hope you have as much bliss as I do next time you sit down to sharpen your pencils and um, Stay tuned for the next video because I'll be covering the other sharpeners that I have handy here to try out And I hope you have a colorful blissful day. Bye!